All right, so one of the most common things with the Explorer, especially the ST, is the transmission. So I'll throw in some clips of mine. Um, you can see like a night and day difference between like the lack of a little bit of fluid and having the right amount of fluid. Ford manual and the gearheads kind of argue about this uh, and you'll see when we get this out this is a real pain in the butt to do it by yourself we'll show you step by step first of all you're gonna need like a long 19 millimeter ratcheting wrench preferred but anyway the Ford manual is gonna say anywhere between 3 and 4.5 is the fill level now the bigger the number the lower it actually is on the dipstick the gearheads are gonna say somewhere between two and a half and three. So when I did mine, I shot it in the middle and I filled it to three. Mine was like half a quart low. And from those video clips, you can see half a quart low that that thing was absolutely, it was like wheel hop. It was shaking the car on the one, two shift. So it does make a pretty big difference. And like I said, you are gonna need this. Another thing, I'll link, this is like an Amazon wrench. Um, another cheap tool for this is one of these Pittsburgh uh, Harbor Freight they call them all to use transfer pump, but we're gonna make, we're gonna be able to use this so we can pump this uh, Ford ULV straight into the transmission. Cause when I get down there, as he's kind of taking the plug off, I'm gonna show you, there's no way that you can pour fluid in there. You have to pump it in there. There's absolutely no way. Unfortunately, this needs to be hot, like up to operating temp, it needs to be in park and running while you do it. So that part of it all sucks. I mean, there's not much room when we get down here, I'll show you as he's like kind of taking the plug off, but um, I'll explain more of that as we get into it. But it is not that hard. All you need is these basic tools and you're gonna need some sort of glove and long sleeve shirt for sure to get to it. All right, so if you look right up in there, that's the plug now. I've already put the wrench in there and loosened it. I'm gonna reach up and after you get it like a couple turns loose, it'll come out by hand, but the actual dipstick is attached to that so again driver's side here's the exhaust he's running aftermarket uh, thermal exhaust and we have the car off now um, but we'll end up cranking it back up once we get this off and i'll bring it out on the main camera and show you guys what this assembly looks like um and that way you're not surprised when you loosen this up all right so i bring you in close here on the dipstick now when you pull them out these are going to come out like this so when you loosen this, more than likely it's gonna come out as a unit. Um, you can just take this part off, you don't need this. Uh, when you're checking it, just gonna put this dipstick back in. Now, I don't know if you can tell or not, but there's numbers on there. And what I found is that basically each one of these little triangle marks in between the numbers is like half a quart. So I think one quart's the difference between one number and the next. Now, you can see there's fluid all over this. So we're gonna start his car, we're gonna wipe this off, put this back in and then get a good measurement um, on the dipstick and see where we're at, see what we need to add. All right, so we're gonna show you this. If you can see, his is real low. Now, when he was like kicking, this is brand new, it's a 2025. So this is potentially how yours could be from the dealership. And when he was like getting on it, he said it was feeling like he was being like rear-ended by someone accelerating, like it's banging the gear that much. So we need to get this from five all the way up to like three so in this case that's basically we're gonna probably put like a quart in this check it and then i've got another piece of a quart and it is a few lines above five so that should get them up to three but this is definitely case again this is a 2025 it's never been touched so definitely a case where you know super underfilled from the factory and this is basically stock except for exhaust and he's already experiencing like some rough trans shifts. So good that we caught it early, but yeah, I'll get it set up. I'll lower this tripod, kind of show you the pump set up. You won't be able to see everything is going up and in. Once you get to the plug, as soon as you take the plug out, you're gonna know exactly where all this goes. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get some uh, fluid in this and uh, yeah, get her filled up. I think I got her in there. You ready? Yeah. All right. All right, I got you in close. You can see there we took it to just above 
the three it's kind of a pain and i can't really show you under there because of the camera but what i found because i lose this several times is that you have to come up over the exhaust and kind of hold this bring your next hand in and grab it and then that allows you to see where this goes but it's it's a nightmare but it's worth it so we're gonna cap this back off when you go to reinstall you can just go ahead and put this back as an assembly that's how i'm gonna do it i'm just gonna put the whole assembly in there um yeah so we'll tighten this up it's gonna take it on a rip and we'll see if it changed his basically uh, wide open throttle two three one two shift performance All right, so he ended up having to take off. He did take the car out around the block, did some hard acceleration, and all those shifting problems have been resolved by simply adding about a quart of transmission fluid. Now in mine, it was a half a quart, but I think basically anybody with a 10R60 Explorer, Explorer ST, if you are experiencing these or you're getting a new car, you just bought it, whether it's brand new from the dealership or whether you bought it used, I bought this 2022 about a month ago, they should check it. Um, most, if not almost all of them, are low on fluid and it will cause problems. ULV is not the best lubricant for transmissions as it is. So running low on that, especially when you're accelerating on the all-wheel drive models as it's pulling fluid away from that pickup, you want to have that little bit of extra. Again, for me personally, I like filling it to three. That's kind of max for Ford. And again, that's kind of middle of the road for the gearheads. The gearheads, I think, actually fill these to 2.5. Those guys have a ton more time on this platform than I do. I'm not arguing with them at all. I'm not saying one way is right, but I am saying that you need to check it. It is not that hard. Again, links to those, and those are not affiliate links down in the description below. You will see the Explorer again. We're gonna be doing more content with this. I'm going to give you guys a pros con video on owning the Explorer. I've kind of had this car long enough now to be out of the honeymoon phase with it. Um, there are some things that I love about it. There are some things that I don't love about it. And if you're looking at a performance SUV, I think there are some really good bits of information for you guys who may be looking to make this purchase between this and like an RT Durango, an SRT Jeep, or something along those lines of a performance SUV in the same approximate price range. But again, I appreciate you guys watching and hopefully we'll catch you on the next one.